In this video, we explain the range of applicability of Raoult's law, uh, and we mention ideal solutions and non-ideal solutions. Okay, so Raoult's law controls the vapor pressure or how the vapor pressure of a liquid uh, or a solvent A changes when you add a solute B. All right, uh, and there is a direct proportionality between uh, the vapor pressure uh, of that solvent in the mixture with the mole fraction uh, of the solvent in the mixture, right? So the more solvent you have, the higher the vapor pressure of that solvent. The more solute you add, the lower the vapor pressure of that solvent. Now what we can do is actually then uh, uh, try to explain how this law um, applies to the entire range of possible concentrations. And the range of possible concentrations for a binary mixture of just two uh, substances, A and B, would be to go from no A to 100% uh, A, and from 100% B to no B. All right, so let's try to see if we can actually draw here how Raoult's law would look like for that entire range of concentration. We're going to be plotting here uh, the pressure, the vapor, uh, the vapor pressure of uh, those liquids A and B as a function of the concentration or the mole fraction of A and B. Right? Notice that this is a binary mixture, so what that means is that the mole fractions of A and B always have to add up to 1. Okay? So uh, let's assume that uh, right here we will have no A, and right here we will have only A. What that means then is that right here, if we only have A, then there would be no B, and then here it would have no A, then we would have only B. All right, so that's, uh, that's how this graph looks like. And here we're going to simply plot the vapor pressures of A and B. Okay, notice how uh, this line uh, works for A. Okay, so what we're going to draw here is, is the line of vapor pressures of A. Let's suppose that we have only A, right? There's no B present. Then the vapor pressure that you have right here is what we call the vapor pressure of A when pure, right? At that point, because there's no B, there's only A, then the vapor pressure that you have is just the vapor pressure of A when pure. Let's go to the other range. Notice that if you don't have any A at all, then there can't be any vapor pressure of A. That vapor pressure of A should be zero. Right? In the middle, uh, you have uh, there's a direct proportionality between the vapor pressure and the mole fraction, so this should be a straight line. And that is what we call Raoult's law. Okay, great. Now, uh, what will happen for B? Well, for B, notice that if you don't have any B at all, which is right here, uh, then there would be no vapor pressure of B at all. And if you only have B, uh, which we can put right here, okay, then that would be the vapor pressure of B when pure. Okay. In the middle, you have Raoult's law, so that is uh, how this would look like. Okay. Uh, notice that this is the line of vapor pressures for B, that is the line of vapor pressures of A, okay. and that's of B. Now, uh, we can actually calculate what the total pressure, uh, uh, total vapor pressure on top of that liquid would be, A and B, when we have them together, right? the total pressure, P, A, and P, B, and that is just the sum of these two lines which is conveniently uh, a trace by just uh, drawing a straight line in between those two points. Okay? Again, notice that this line simply tells you the sum of this and that at any point. Okay? All right, so notice that in this graph, all the lines are straight. Okay? And that, is, uh, that means that uh, the range of applicability of Raoult's law is the entire concentration uh, range. This happens very rarely. And, and when this happens, we say that the solutions are ideal. Okay, and, and these are the conditions under which you have ideal condition, uh, and the ideal solutions. Right, the idea here is that uh, for an ideal solution, the interactions of A with B have to be exactly of the same uh, strength as the interactions of A with A and B with B. When you have that type of uh, equal interaction between uh, the two molecules that you're forming the mixture with and the molecules within, uh, with themselves, then that is an ideal mixture. Okay, so let's give an example for what an ideal mixture would look like. Think about benzene, which is this molecule, and toluene, which is this molecule. Okay, you can see how the interactions of toluene with toluene uh, are going to be very similar to the interactions of toluene with benzene and very similar to the interactions of benzene with benzene, right? So all of the molecules interact kind of the same way, right? Uh, either when they're pure or when they're mixed, 
and that actually gives rise to uh, a quite linear uh, vapor pressure plot uh, as you have right there. This would be an ideal mixture. But of course ideal mixtures are very, very rare and uh, it's actually quite common to find uh, deviations from Raoult's law. So for example, think about a mixture where you would have water and uh, maybe formaldehyde. Okay. Notice that formaldehyde interacts with formaldehyde only through dipole-dipole and a little bit of dispersion interactions, and water interacts with water uh, through hydrogen bonds. But then the interactions of water with formaldehyde and formaldehyde with water are going to be quite different as formaldehyde with formaldehyde or water with water. Right. So in that case, you actually have that you will have a non-ideal solution, and it turns out that there are deviations from Raoult's law uh, that appear quite quickly. Okay, so there's going to be two types of deviations that are uh, uh, easily seen. Okay, one of them would be uh, what we call a positive deviation. Okay, so that would be x sub a, x sub b, 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 0. Right, so what, we ha what happens in a positive deviation is that uh, you do satisfy Raoult's law at high concentrations, but then uh, you actually uh, have a higher vapor pressure than what you, what you would expect from Raoult's law, which is this dashed line. And for the other component, you would have exactly the same thing. This is the expectation of Raoult's law, and then you only follow Raoult's law at high uh, concentrations. When you go to low concentrations, there's a different uh, regime there. Okay, so that would be P sub A star, B B star, that is the vapor pressure, and this is what we call a positive deviation. Right, so under what conditions do you observe a positive deviation? Well, if the interactions of A with B are not as favorable as the interactions with A with A and B with B, what that means is that uh, uh, there's very little tendency for A and B to be together, and they would rather be in the gas phase where they don't need to interact. When that's the case, when the interactions of A with B are less favorable than A with A and B with B, then again there's an increased tendency for A and B to go into the gas phase and that's when you observe that the pressure that you measure is slightly higher than if there were no those uh, unfavorable interactions. Okay? So that is the positive deviation from Raoult's law and then you can have a negative deviation as well which would be exactly backwards. right? So here you would have A varying from 0 to 1 and B varying from one, 0 to 1. Okay? And then you would have that this would be the expectation from Raoult's law for uh, liquid A. All right, and you actually only satisfy Raoult's law at high concentrations, but then you fall below the prediction of Raoult's law. And then for B, that would be the prediction of Raoult's law. If the solution was ideal, in reality, you only satisfy that at high uh, concentrations of B, but then you fall below at lower concentrations. So that is still PB star, PA star, and then this is the vapor pressure. So that is a negative deviation, which is also rooted in uh, the way that A and B are in interacting. So in this case, what happens is that A and B are interacting very strongly. And what that means is that they have uh, much less of a tendency to uh, go into the gas phase, which is what the vapor pressure is, right? So what has to happen here is that the interactions of A with B are stronger than the interactions of A with A and B with B. When that happens, you have a negative deviation, and that means that uh, the pressure that you observe is actually less than your prediction from Raoult's law. That is that we could also trace here uh, Raoult's law total pressure and then what you observe will be lower in this case. And here would be Raoult's law prediction, and what you observe right there is much higher than Raoult's law. Right, so in this uh, video we have explained a little bit about, uh, we have discussed the range of applicability of Raoult's law, and we've said that uh, when you plot Raoult's law for a binary mixture, uh, uh, ideality uh, would lead to these straight lines uh, in the entire concentration regime. That happens very rarely because it requires equal interactions of A with B as A with A and B with B. Generally, that is not the case, and you either have a positive devi deviation where there's unfavorable interactions between A and B, and that means that there's a higher tendency for those molecules to go into the gas phase, or negative deviations in which A and B are strongly interacting in solution, and they have less of a tendency to go into the gas phase.